Hey guys, welcome back to Noxion Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and for the past 700 cycles we've been working on cooling down petroleum. It's not actually been all of the 700 cycles but it sure has felt like it. And finally, finally we've got a bit of an output on the go over there. And today I would like to deal with making a petroleum based fuel generating, uh, sorry not fuel, fuel based generator for electricity over here. But I've noticed we've got a bit of an issue over here. You see how this turbine is getting too hot? That means that these are also starting to get a bit warm. And inside here, the steam is also getting quite hot. So I'm going to press pause here. And I'm going to have a look at the automation overlay. And I'm going to go, oh, I have totally overcomplicated this, haven't I? If we come down to our favorite, uh, favorite little system over here, you can see that the cooling is pretty much only done by one single... Uh, one single piece of automation here. Now, because of the way we've set this up, we're still going to need the buffer gate, but everything else, almost everything else, needs to go. So I'm going to, I'm just going to start dragging things out here. We don't, we don't need any of this. I want to rework this wire to go up and into the buffer gate. Uh, this whole system under here, uh, it was good when I was like when we needed this sort of section over here. But now that I figured out another way of doing it, it's just it, again over complex. So we're going to come down here and we're going to take all of this out. This is. To control the flow of water we don't want the flow of water controlled we just want it to go but of course if all that is coming out we need to regulate the cooling from over here so i'm going to grab out a plumbing i'm going to turn this liquid bridge around like this and this is where our liquids are going to go if the aqua tuner is turned off i know crazy why would we turn it off well we would turn it off if it's too cold now down here we're seeing if above eight degrees is that how we want to have it i don't know for the moment what i actually want to do is rip down these doors press p0 and go hey get this done for us guys Okay, so we got all that panic going on. I also want to do some other things just whilst we're getting in there. I want to put an atmosphere sensor down. I want to get some wire, uh, iron wire going up there. And we're going to control this liquid shutoff, which brings fresh water in uh, by the amount of atmosphere that is in here. We're going to set it up to like 10 kilos, something like that. I want to just quickly do things like this as well. Uh, I want to replace the wire that's back there because it's made out of lead, not iron. And we could, we are already up to 230. As we know, uh, that, that's getting close to the melting point of, of lead so let's try and pick all that back up no it's 320 but you know still it could get there of course like the melting of the lead wires would probably be some of my least problems at that point okay so everything seems to be putting back into place uh, i'm gonna wait for all of this to actually be done. well now that i say that let's have a look i think now if i press f6 this should be the last pipe going into place and why isn't it flowing around? okay we now have it flowing around the uh the, the water should just keep on going beautiful beautiful Beautiful. Another thing I want to do is take this liquid shutoff out uh, and just run this pipe across like this instead. Because it's not needed. It's not needed. Uh, let's make that pretty high priority. So hopefully Mad Frank will come down, take that out, because uh, it was trying to backflow into itself, and that, that wasn't helpful. Okay, this is a much better system. If it's above eight, and after a little bit of buffer, because of course it needs to go up and travel, I'm going to say two seconds, uh, because it takes one second to transfer from pipe to pipe, uh, it will then pick up the bubble and send it down uh, at a much more chill amount. That's great. This should now mean that we constantly have quite a quite a large amount of liquid flowing here and hopefully we don't top out at the 75 look at that the 72 was getting very close i'm just going to watch this for a little while uh 72.1 uh, that is actually going down i feel a lot better about what's going on here beautiful uh we should we should totally seal this in now I've also hooked this up to only turn on if it goes above 200 degrees in here to try and like get a bit more efficiency out of the power. Okay, night time of cooling has brought this down about two degrees, so I like that. It's all being used as uh, as we've been watching it, so it should be burning heat as well. That means that this is running uh, wonderfully. I should be able to actually watch this temperature here start creeping down as we bring this down towards eight degrees, uh, but. The next thing we want to do for today is, of course, all the way over here. If I come into the power and I go to the natural... No, I don't want that. I want the petroleum generator. You can see that we're going to be taking in two kilograms per second of petroleum. And we're going to be 
I hate giving that. We're going to be spitting out half a kilo of carbon dioxide and ooh, three quarters of a kilo of polluted water. Most of these things we can easily deal with. St uh, steam might be a bit of an issue. Uh, let's try and put this in here at a high... Mm, let's think about it. We're going to have a floor running across the top. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say let's have a bunch of ladders going across the top here for the moment. Uh, this might even end up being a way down like this afterwards. Let's get a mesh tile. And then do we want to fit a second one in just in case? I think we do. I think we do. Let's start planning stuff out. Petroleum generator, a second one in down here. This doesn't really leave us room for the slicks that I was talking about. So let's not do that because I want to actually go ahead and do the slicks. I think we're going to put a pneumatic door in sideways. Yeah, like this. And this can be the ranch area. So I'm going to clear this out, uh, this area out underneath. And then if I go C, what was the 16 by 4? I think this was the actual area for a decent farm, was it not? Let's go check the room at the room overlay and find out. Hmm, as it turns out, we can have it wider. If I drag this out, this is 16. We can go out to 24, but we can't because of that guy there. What about 5? 16 times 5 is 80. That's too much. We could probably do some sort of weird... Oh, well, we're going to need somewhere to pull all the liquids out from anyway, so we will need to have a slope of some description here. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll start with this, and then we'll probably end up digging this up as well. Hmm, turns out pneumatic doors overheat. Who knew? I didn't know. What about manual doors? No, manual doors don't have an overheat temperature. That's weird. No, this is taking damage. Why are you taking damage? Where are you taking damage from? Well, how have you got this hot? Stop, stop, stop. What? I don't get it. I don't get it. We specifically set this up not to do this. Uh, I don't get it. Literally everything around it is colder. Some like hot stuff down here, maybe? Let's try and get rid of that. See what happens with that. So I swept everything I could. And it looks like it stopped us overheating. All right. That's, that's kind of good. But where's the heat coming from? Well, I mean... We'd think the rocks underneath were where the heat were coming from, right? Oh, it looks like Frank is getting ready to connect all this together, and I am not ready for that yet. So I'm just going to break this wire, uh, this pipeline just here. Oh, we stopped after that first one. That's that's not what. I, anyway, the reason that I'm not ready yet is because I want to connect up this power system through the top here, and uh, I just haven't been able to get people to dig it out. So we'll we'll just have to wait and see what's going on. I mean, really, when you get down to it, what are the symptoms of you overworking your duplicates? I guess we'll just never know, really. Hmm, where's she gonna go when she does this? All right, she goes in the direction I was hoping her to. I, I had some horrible vision of her getting crammed up into this one space there and then slowly suffocating to death. Thankfully not. Okay, so I've been trying to capture some carbon dioxide down here. It looks like that has been the case. The reason I want carbon dioxide rather than natural gas, if we have a look up here, we can see that its thermal conductivity is 0 0.35 as opposed to the carbon dioxide, which has a thermal conductivity of 0 0.15, which is literally half. If we got chlorine in here, it would be 0 0.08 that is half again but i i i tried to bother to get that down here we'll just uh, cap this off now i think all right no time got cooled but we can do a little bit of testing while that's going down you can see that this uh, this line here has a break in the joint i did that very close together so that we could just throw them together like uh, that beautiful beautiful now all the petroleum that we ha happen to have in the system to begin with has now gone and got picked up by this pump and it's being pushed out over this way to go into my petroleum generator producing a massive two kilowatts of power that's still not enough but you know it's, it's a good start let's have a look at our energy uh, i need to be getting 21 kilowatts so that's a that's a tenth of what we need there uh, but as you can see down below it is producing some uh, polluted water which of course is landing down into the hot uh, hot liquids down here and instantly turning into steam but it's also producing carbon dioxide as well and that's why i've got this uh this uh critter drop off down here because i intend to drop off uh some slicks and they're gonna eat all the all the carbon dioxide it's gonna turn it into uh either crude oil or petroleum the crude will get pumped straight over this way and get dumped into the the system some more and of course the petroleum going straight back into the generators but whilst we are here i've got bored of waiting for this shall we artificially change this uh, number to 230 once this gets back to, to resetting with all the petroleum flush i'll turn it back down to 200 but 230 is of course um survivable by the steel pump so i'm gonna i'm gonna press that i'm gonna press enter and we're gonna see what happens this should now just flow out 
And this hydro sensor down below is waiting to be told that there's less than 100 kilograms of liquid about. Now, is that actually going to happen during this single flow? I, I kind of hope so. The petroleum generator is done already. That's because, of course, we are clearing all the crude out through the system. Ah, we, we knew this was going to have a little bit of a, um, a wear up time. And here it is. We've got to deal with it right now. Okay, so the hydro sensor has clicked. The temperature has changed back above 230. This has gone back down. I don't like how little amount it let through, but we're going to take it for now. I'm going to go to 200, back, put that back down. As you can see, the single door in the middle has opened back up, creating a nice solid thermal barrier between the two, or rather a not solid thermal barrier, a vacuous thermal barrier between the two. What I'm really wanting to know is whether this crude oil is going to warm up enough to turn into petroleum or whether... No, is that temperature going up or down? That temperature is going down. Okay. That, that's good because this is exactly what this chamber is for to drop temperatures uh, I'm mostly going to be interested to know how quickly we drop this temperature I've got a feeling it's going to be something like 10 cycles and that might not be helpful wow more things that I didn't know had an overheat condition all right I need to try and t shift down a couple of slicksters we're going to do that uh, I think we're going to have a little bit of trouble though so maybe we want to destroy that so what's it made out of uh, it's asking for aluminium okay that's fine we can we can we can make do with that the way that i'm going to get these slicksters out of here you might have noticed whilst playing yourself that you can't actually get around to wrangling these guys they just don't seem to have the uh, the stats can i click on cannot wrangle that's a bit of a shame so we're gonna to have to try and move the uh the lava egg maybe or are we going to be able to do the other thing so if i grab this critter drop off and i press b and i would put it down in there and say actually can you guys come and fix this as soon as possible let's just uh, usurp someone from the from the jobs here Okay, and with this in place here, if we go max critters, there's currently four, so if we say max critters three, what are you going to do at this point? Auto wrangle surplus, is that even a thing? I saw this on someone else's video, and I uh, I was wondering whether it worked with these guys. Looks like not, but uh, it was worth a try, worth a try. Well, we've got this little egg here, we can move it down. And then down here, we've got critter eggs, we can say, can we have a... It's a lava, right? Uh, a lava egg, if we could uh, and i'm just gonna go bam bam do that at the highest priority possible please mimi's on it nice and we're just going to come along and yoink this one from its family. I don't think anybody's going to have any problems with that. Uh, we'll take it downstairs. The, the big thing to remember here is that the whole time that this is inside a storage container, it will be losing viability, be losing a little bit of health. So we need to make sure that we can keep an eye on it. In fact, what I'm going to do is watch Mimi go and make this delivery and then instantly turn off the, uh, the ability for the storage device down there to actually hold the critter egg anymore, thus putting it on the floor and hopefully allowing allowing us to just raise it like we would a normal boy. Okay, critter egg, let's turn this off. Oh, yeah, there we go. It got dropped on the floor instantly. Hopefully it doesn't overheat. I'm never really worried about that, actually. Hmm. I should imagine not, but we'll find out. Okay, whilst this crude oil is at somewhat of a dealable temperature, I'm going to do something relatively crazy. I'm going to come through and I am going to break the uh, the bonds of all of the automation down the bottom here. And I'm going to say, hey, can we have these on auto so that we can get our duplicates in to start sweeping all of this up? Because I feel like the thermal mass down here is holding us back. It may have helped when the uh, first amount of petroleum came in, but I think after it absorbs the heat, it's just making it a slower process. Just to be safe, I'm a little bit worried about what happens when my duplicates get in here and all this liquid uh, rushes out. I don't want to let this 300 degree, um, 300 degree petroleum down onto my liquid pump because, of course, it would almost instantly melt. So I have turned down this hydro sensor to only open if there's less than one kilo. And honestly, I think when we get a little film of water like this, yeah, look, there's two kilos just here on this. So I hopefully will have that film covering here as well oh, i heard the dulcet cries of the printing pod here do we have we have a rancher with three i was kind of hoping for a rancher with seven the operating of three is also good buff flatulent no i i don't i actually don't want all that Mm, natural gas floating around my base. We could deal with it. We actually could deal with it as it only comes out in the base and we have a filtration system in place. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. We'll take these curated tablets though. Oh yeah. Okay, so with this thoroughfare now uh, accessible to duplicants, I'm gonna do the unholy of hitting 
big, big panics on this one. And hopefully a whole load of people come along and tidy this, this area in the middle up for us. Here goes the flow of the liquid. Actually, no, it's not going to be too bad because we're openly opening one side at a time. There is definitely going to be a flow set up, as we can see by the, the liquids dropping into here. But I think it's manageable. I think it is very manageable. So what's the big idea here then? So let me show you. If we have a look at the way the gases are distributing here, you can see we've got carbon dioxide laying down at the bottom. That is coming from the petroleum generator. And we've got steam fractionating away at the top there. We're going to have to do something a little bit better with how we collect that. But that's that basically the split that's happening. The sour gas is an unfortunate side effect from working down in the oil biome down here. Uh, anytime any of the, uh, the, the crude products get warmed up high enough, you end up with this sour gas just kind of hanging around. I think I'm just going to get rid of it with one of these like door destroyers over this side and then we'll have two distinct layers i then want to run a whole bunch of the steam turbines up above that should hopefully uh keep the temperature within a, a sort of a magical 200 degree range uh that will enable us to keep making steam and i want to do a layer let's have a look in here now of the utilities of the temperature shift plates you know what we've been mining all these diamonds let's make use of them where, wherever they are diamond there we go let's let's put some temperature shift plates down to help spread all the uh, all the heat around here. All right, beautiful. Another thing that I'm bu building here is a smart battery made out of steel. Uh, that's because right now everything is well accounted for with the with the uh, with the power. You can see that we've got 10, uh, 10 kilowatts being produced, only consuming four of those. So we definitely want to try and do something about that. Someone's getting scolded. Decipher. Uh, the problem is this incubator. If we have a look at the properties, it's uh, 112 degrees right now. <laughs> He's walking up and cuddling it uh, and, and then has a little bit of a problem, which, you know, yeah, fair enough. He should definitely be having a problem with that. But why, why hasn't... What, what's going on, Forrest? You doing all right? Yeah, okay, all right. Why why hasn't this over here been turned back on? Uh, atmospheric suit checkpoint. Uh, enable building. I did ask for it to be done. Enable? Yeah, there we go. High, high priority. Let, let's, let's get it done, guys. I feel like we're there, you know, with all this power being turned over, I feel like we're doing well enough. Okay, so we've got the smart battery up here. I'm going to turn that down to 95 and then turn this up to uh, 15. Why not? Why not? Uh, and then hopefully very, very soon this last bit of uh, wire will be put into place and we'll have a nice control system. Uh, currently not enough liquid resource. Okay, I see what's going on there. Uh, where's the petroleum? It's currently cooling. I, I really feel like... 220 is actually where we want to be there. Ah, uh, we need people to come along and fix this stuff, though. Oh, Frank, how did you do it? You don't even seem to be bothered about it, actually. We've gone and got himself uh, totally destroyed in there. He's like, there we go. It's, it's finally registered that he's actually in trouble. Uh, how do we turn up the priority here? There we go. Let's just do that. And hopefully Miss should be coming along. Turns out she doesn't want to dig this thing out. Why does Miss not want to dig that? It's a little bit of a shame because it now means that she's also going to be a bit troubled who who's coming along this this is quite a, a high priority dig who's doing it no no one no oh this is gonna dig that out and now come running yeah there we go okay there was a bit of a problem there a bit of a problem but it turns out it's dealable oh please we need to need to let the man out is this gonna work no how about if we build a whole bunch of ladders underneath him is that gonna work oh, dude seriously how are we gonna get you out of here well, we know how. We break this tile here, right? Okay, let's try that as well. And uh, one, one of these is going to work. Hopefully before he dies. Where, what, where, are we, where are we watching some numbers drop? I don't know. I actually don't know. What, 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 what's being lost here? Look at that. I don't think he's... I think he could survive there until he starves to death. I mean, I don't, I don't suggest we do that. But he probably could have stayed there until he starved to death. I'm a little bit worried that we're up at the very top range of what this guy can survive with, the uh, the slickster down here, that is. Uh, but he's going to kind of have to deal with it. So these are going to have to be untemperature regulated. We're just going to have to be bringing this temperature down to 150 as quick as possible to keep this guy alive. All right, we can do that. We can do that. Oh, I didn't turn this back up. Ah, I wonder how long this has been sat being idle. Quite a while by the looks of it, quite a while. It has managed to bring it down to under 200 degrees, which is nice. I want to see what happens when it all starts flowing. I'm worried about the amount of gas in here, actually. Look how all this sour gas is. Pretty rubbish, isn't it? Uh, we'll have to figure out a way of opening it. I mean, I suppose we could just open this for the moment, right? Oh, a lava egg died. 
I don't know how it happened, but it is gone. Oh no, no. I really don't know how it happened. I, I definitely didn't, oh, I might have swept it. I didn't think I swept it. Where would it have ended up? Like under, oh, under the water maybe? Oh, that's, that's sad. That's very sad. Also, I just noticed that uh, we're not able to pump the uh, uh, gases out of here because the, uh, the the automation wire comes up and past here. Got to, got to change that. Okay, and now the gases can flow and hopefully come into here to get destroyed. Maybe we want to open all these doors up. No, 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 that would be a bad plan. Is this one the one we had under the, is, is, did, did they steal it to put it back here? That could very, yeah, look at that. That is almost definitely the case. All right, let's turn that all the way down. In fact, let's disable this building for a moment. I want to get this egg out of here. How do I go about doing it? We can remove it like that. Okay, cool. L life has been solved. I now need to get back to going, putting down the, uh, the, the storage container down here because, of course, that is how we moved the egg last time, and I want to do it again. The storage area has been built, and now I've asked Jenny to go ahead and take that egg down below. Was that the sound of the printer I heard there? Well, as soon as we have finished watching Jenny take this all the way down and then us uh, spit the egg back out on the floor, uh, I will take us up to the printer and see if we've got ourselves that husbandry dupe that we've been looking for for a while now. Okay, down he comes. Oh, so many extra doors to worry about there, but we will then pause the game at this point. Storage bin. Hey, you see that critter egg you've got? Get rid of that, please. All right, cool. As it is lullaby. Oh, it's not lullaby anymore. But it was lullaby, but as you can see, we've only got like five cycles left for this to uh, to actually hatch. It would have probably been nice to have left it up there for just like one more lullab lullabization, but no, that didn't happen. Anyway, let's press the H key and move our way up towards the printer. Let's see what we've got in here. Ah, uh, no, nothing, nothing I'm particularly intrigued at. We'll go with the rust, though. I do also face another dilemma. Of course, these steam pumps here, steam turbines, sorry, are going to have 95 degree water coming out. Now, normally, I would just pump the water in here to do a little bit of cooling. But this, these uh, petroleum generators are going to keep producing more water. So if I continue to keep pumping the water back in, eventually we're going to end up with a, mm, a pressure bomb. We're just going to have a pressure bomb in here. That's, that's what's going to happen. One day, the dupes will walk through here and uh, hundreds of thousands of kilos that were in there would explode out the door uh, and cook everybody. So we need to come up with a much better plan than that. We do need to pour some back in because we need to cool down the things. In particular down here we need to cool down the uh, the, the, the critter down here. He can't survive any higher than uh, 150 I believe. I'm not allowed to... Uh to click that, okay. Try clicking the actual slicker instead. As you can see, it only really likes to live between uh, up to 140. So we need to try and uh, put down a thermo sensor down here. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. We'll go thermo sensor. I'll pop that there, uh, and then we want to have maybe a liquid lock somewhere, like so not a liquid lock, a liquid uh, shut off valve, uh, some somewhere for our liquids to be told yes or no. And I think we might just do that off over to the side here because I want to keep this area cool. I don't want to. I mean, do we want to build just another steam powered thing down here? Um, no, no, I'm not. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to do it like this. I now realize the way that I've taken these pipes up and over means that these liquid bridges are completely irrelevant and I should take them out and replace them with radiant pipe. But anyway, I've been taking all the hot water out, or the cold water actually, because the hot water, the steam is underneath, but it's hot water. It's 95 degree water out and over the top. We'll be going via this uh, liquid shut off valve. Uh, if we if we have got too high a temperature underneath here, we'll take this uh, liquid shut off, uh, the liquid, in fact, just the liquid. And I think we'll just dump it here. Boom. And then we'll have this area cooling down all of this. Uh, and as it's near the door, it's probably a good good idea, right? Or do we want to dump it on the thermo aqua tuna? I'm not sure how hot it's going to get in here, you know? Oh, we are out of iron. Like, we're out of iron. Ooh. Okay, so we actually ran out of jobs over here on the smeltery, so I'm going to hit forever and uh, let them just kind of turn over like that. Eventually, the yeah, we've run out of iron there, so we need to get the iron to make the steel. All right, yeah, that should work out. Should, should. Okay, so I think that's most of the infrastructure in place. The slick is less than two days away. I've turned off this door crusher because we have a look inside here. You can see we've got none of the materials that we don't want. All the sour gas seems to be out here for some reason. I'm kind of okay with that. The next thing we want to do, of course, is to come in and try and put some liquids inside this pipe. If I come over to the refinement... No, 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 plumbing. Why would I even say that? Uh, I'm going to put that right there, and then we're going to have a very, very tense couple of moments as we're going to bring this up and 
went into the system. Now, the reason that it's going to be tense is I don't know if you guys are aware, but this petroleum coming out of the system is still quite hot. We did cool it down quite a lot. You know, we've cooled it down a couple of hundred degrees, something like that, but it is still very hot. And I'm hoping that this uh, thermo aqua thermo tuner over this side uh, can take the brunt of the burden and uh, make this work how we need it. Uh, I've just noticed that people don't have a way over to here now. Let's uh, let's make that a thing. All right, cool. Now, now that that is a thing, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can fill this loop up and uh, this this will start cooling everything down and hopefully not getting to the point where it overheats before this steam turbine can turn on. That that's that's really what we want here. Yeah, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, maybe we do want the liquid vent over here. Okay, so the liquid now flows. We don't actually want to let too much in here, but that's okay. We're, go we're going to just let enough... Oh, no, nighttime has been cool. This might interrupt our plans for stopping the flow somewhat. Okay, even though nighttime has been cooled, I've asked for this pipe here to be destroyed at the highest possible error. And so, of course, Mr. Line is going to come along with much uh, much complaints and grumbling. But, of course, it, you know, that's, that's to be expected. But things need to happen, unfortunately. Look at all of this. Oh. We've done some wonders in time. We have done some wonders. Really kind of do need to fill this little uh, break in the system up with some ethanol. We can totally do that at some point. Should have done it during maintenance day. Uh, but here we go. All right, come on, miss. Let's see if you can get down there and actually get some sleep tonight. That would be great. Watch for that little bit of petroleum to get dropped on the floor there. I'm kind of all right with it, though. Doesn't mean I'm not going to mop it, but I am kind of all right with it. Okay, so 145 seems to be the radiant temperature we're trying to deal with. The, the radiant, the ambient temperature we're trying to deal with, sorry. Uh, and... And we are dealing with it 10 degrees at a time, as is the way of the thermal aqua tuner. I'm just a little bit worried about how quickly the, uh, the temperature appears to be climbing there. That That's not going to be great. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look over here and see if we can make this uh, a sealed unit over here. Got a little storage container up here set on high alert because I wish for all my duplicates to come along and clear out all this stuff underneath here. But I find it a little interesting that these steam turbines actually appear to be cooling down in the opposite order to what I thought they would be. I thought this one uh, all sort of locked away in itself would get cooled down from the uh, input of cool more before this one with its uh, exposure to the heat over here would. And it turns out, bam, we are, we are good. All right, does that just let things go? Uh, I see. It's all about what's going on with the temperatures down below. Hopefully... Hopefully it should get nice and warm again. I'll definitely want to move some more of these diamond temperature shift plates into the situation here. Uh, I might even just do that. I, th I think that's probably a good plan. And maybe have another one coming down over this side. All right, beautiful. Let's cancel that top one. Oh, look, he's here. Oh, we got a tiny little baby slickster. He should hopefully eat all of this carbon dioxide, especially with this generator only being an intermittent on and off. That said, looks like this is about ready to go again any moment. Uh, 5.2 and falling quite quickly. I'm not sure what suddenly has increased our power consumption, but, you know, I'm fine with having power consumption. Uh, suddenly it turns on. This guy's having a sleep and a shower at the same time. How convenient. Getting little bits of liquid kind of staying down the bottom here, but they do very quickly turn into steam which is good because I'm getting little warnings up here that these guys don't have enough steam so that 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 will work out for us right all right next problem if it's not too if it's not hot enough down here this all backs up and then these one by one turn off right yeah that's a big problem Okay, got a little bit of a solution to our pipes backing up here. It looks like a bit of a mess, and honestly, it is a kind of a mess. But what's going to go on here is if the water does not have to leave this place uh, and go in for the cooling, it will go into this storage tank here. This storage tank will just be circulating water past this aqua tuner, which will be trying to find out whether it is uh, cool enough down, down below. I don't know, let's say... 20 degrees. 20 degrees sounds pretty good. If it's not below 20 degrees, the first thing it does is just get on out of there. If it is, you know what, I might want to swap these pipes around. But if it is uh, below 20 degrees, it will... Um not turn the aqua tuner on and then come to this pipe where it can be removed and taken off to our water tank where we're totally not overflowing and need more space but, but, but anyway it would then take it off to where we can deal with it yeah i definitely will actually rearrange these these uh, elements here about halfway through this build i realized there was a much much simpler way of doing it of course there was there always is uh, we start off by just dumping everything straight into this container over here uh, we then have a thermal aqua tuner down here like comes out comes down through all these pipes and then there should be a thermal aqua tuner down here unfortunately i am a little bit worn out of steel right now i do have some people on making it it's not like we uh we don't have enough it's just we didn't make it in the right time
time. Uh, so, so that's fine. We're just waiting for one to get constructed and then we'll put that into place. Uh, it, so it either gets cooled down or not. But what happens with the cooling? Well, we've got this little uh, shut-off valve here, also made out of steel. That turns this vent on or off if it's uh, too hot, as dictated by the, therm uh, by the thermo sensor down below. Uh, and this vent on this side also uh, turns on or off by the dictate of that, thus cooling both the aqua tuners down in their time of need, dumping the cool water back into here. The next thing I'm thinking of doing is putting a another uh, liquid shut off somewhere on this system uh, to detect for the temperature, maybe even out here somewhere, uh, so we don't have to cool it down quite so much, and then that can remove the remove the water out of here but at the moment actually it's working out quite well just keeping it here all right as promised i put a water extraction system down if the water comes past here and is below 10 degrees this liquid shut off valve on this side will turn on extracting the water out of this system and passing it up to these pipes ready to be taken off to be used i think 10 degree water is probably quite handy for stuff it would also be nice if we could use that for these guys over here but you know we'll we'll see what's going on with that won't we still super waiting for enough steel to get the uh, second therm aqua therma tuner in place. If I have a look here, we could technically use the gold amalgam. That goes up to 175, and as you can see, the temperature here should really be down below 150 at all times, as uh, said by this current. Uh, ooh, wait, whoa, whoa! This this needs to be like 150 above set. Okay, there we go, there we go. So, this whole place down here should be kept nice and chill for this guy. Let's let's try and see what his body temperature is right now. 141, uh, that's that's actually where we want to be, 140, not 150, because we're trying to keep this guy within his livable slash comfortable range. If we click on this, you can see that there's two upper ends here. Uh, we need to keep him, we need to keep him within this, uh, this livable range, but it'd be nice to keep him below the comfortable range. I literally just watched him uh, change into an adult. In fact, watch this bit of footage. Isn't he cute? Oh, that is amazing. Well, anyway, with that in place, uh, this guy's a little glum. That's a bit of a shame. Can we turn this up? Because it's very important that... that well, well, that's not what I wanted to press. Have I got my hand in the wrong place of the keyboard? No? Okay, fine. That's, that's cool. Anyway, over here, I want to make sure this grooming station gets taken care of. Because this guy, he is glum, but he needs to be... Needs to have his metabolism turning over full tilt if he's going to make even a dent in the amount of carbon dioxide this is being uh, given off here. If we come and have a look, does it tell us how much it gives? Not so far, but I've got a feeling somewhere in the power system. 500 grams per second is what's produced. And then what do these guys eat? 20 kilograms per cycle. That's Those are not helpful numbers. How am I supposed to put these together? <laughs> How many seconds in a cycle? It's like 600, right? Well, I think we need more slicksters anyway. I think I think that's where I'm coming to here. Okay, we've got a bit of a flow issue here. I think maybe the liquid vent is stopping things flow past it. I've had this issue before. Yeah, indeed. Ah, oh, that's that's really rubbish because I wanted to use that cooling system there. Hmm. All right. I mean, that's fine. This is something that we can work around. It's just a little bit rubbish, you know. I have a little bit of raining issue going on over here. I'm sure it'll get sorted as soon as we stop letting steam out. Oh, or actually, it might just be getting about 100 degrees down here. Ooh, what's that about? I bet we've got some really hot stuff in the storage bin. I mean, it's doing its job, I suppose. So having a quick look around, I've got a bit of a problem up here with the poke shells. Now, this is a problem because the poke shells are providing my lime, and without lime, I can't make steel. Big problems happen around. But the uh, the growth of the millwood, their, their food source, if you will, it's not quite directly... Um, it's not quite a direct link like that, but the, the millwood rots down to produce their food source. Uh, but anyway, it stopped growing because of the body temperature. So what I need to do is come into here, go ventilation, and I want to get some radiant gas pipe. And I'm just going to do something like this. Ooh, ooh, a little bit too much there. Something like this. Because I want to take this, uh, some gases from over here, and I want to move them through this spot over here. Now, over here, we have got an awful lot of cooling happening via the liquid cooling here. So I want to take some of these gases and uh, use them to chill down the poke shell. Now, I think that should probably do us. So I'm going to grab some insulated line now and go no, no, and go meet up with the other line. What am I doing here? Uh, and I will uh, see what happens when we fill it with some hydrogen. Okay, so believe it or not, this one in here, no, that's natural gas, this one in here, no, this one in here is the hydrogen filter. It comes up off of this pipe down here and then goes up towards the, uh, the Drek, Drek, 
bum, the Draco farm, that's what they call Dracos. Uh, but I'm going to steal it with this gas pipe just before it gets dumped into there. Uh, pass it up and pass it into the cooling loop. I think it's going to take a long time to actually become uh, um, effective like that, but we'll just we'll just leave it running and we'll see what happens. Wait, 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 wait. We're, we are... We are overflowing with oxygen in a bad way. Mm hmm. What happens if I just put a vent here? Probably a very bad idea, but we should try and figure it out. It's also uh, maybe maybe similar f thought process could be put to... Oh, no, all of this is encased. I was going to just put an extra one down somewhere, but it turns out no. How about here as well? There we go. Okay, so I've got that gas pipe network set up, but we still do have this big issue of the gases not wanting to flow through here. Now, I've gone and put that gas vent in as I said I would, but I've decided that there is a much smarter way to deal with it over here. Let's uh, put this up. It is already on a high priority. Let's really put it up on a high priority. It should allow these people to make the gas pipes coming through. Uh, I feel like the biggest draw of oxygen is actually, look, it's, it's happening over here still, uh, is actually the fact that we need to try and get oxygen into the, uh, the, 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 the gas suits over here, the exo suits over here so uh, having a way of putting in from this side i think will help greatly okay and now all of this gas should be flowing into these exosuits a little disappointed that it's designed to take from down here rather than elsewhere but that's right that's fine that's fine that's fine uh, now what we need to try and do is get some of this excess hydrogen out of here but i don't think that's actually going to be a big problem we just need to wait for most of this stuff to clear out and uh, extra hydrogen will come on down for us right Okay, so I've been keeping an eye on this overnight, and I've noticed that there is basically no uh, no hydrogen coming through this all night long. So I'm going to grab a gas bridge, and I'm going to come down here. You see where this is uh, very nicely bringing some hydrogen through through for us. Uh, can can I can I please? Why isn't this selecting gas bridge B? Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm going to put a secondary one in right there, and I'm going to put this hydrogen into the waste out gas uh, outflow line. Uh, this should then go up, get sorted out, uh, and fill up the. the the loop up here and then once uh then you don't have to worry too much because it then flows back down this one to go into the system that looks like it's overflowing anyway so no great problems okay stealing bridge in place we're gonna have to try and remember to get rid of that at some point but right now the packet should be getting sorted out and we need to fill up this entire different colored line here and that's gonna take a little while i believe Okay, so we've got a little bit of hydrogen in here. It seems to be roughly working. As you can see, we're taking the 40 degree temperature of the poke shell farm, bringing it in and almost instantly taking it down to like minus something, uh, like minus five. I think minus five works out pretty well. It then goes in here and almost instantly loses all of its cold to pick up all the extra heat. But that's fine. That means we're slowly bringing down some more areas over here and we should eventually end up with a full gas pipe of hydrogen uh, constantly moving the temperature around and that will work out incredibly well I have to say that making the steel down for this extra thermal aqua tuna is uh, taking a lot longer than I thought if I press B over here you can see that we're still 400 kilograms short and if we come over to the metal refinery over here uh, we can only make 3.5 um, 100 kilograms so we, we've got to wait for a little bit more lime and then I'm going to turn off the iron production and turn this all the way up and just tell people to do this as, as as high as possible as much as they can I've got a feeling we're refining iron rather than steel right now that's kind of okay you know we'll, we'll leave that going uh, waiting for waiting for the steel later oh of course the time I check off camera is the time we get an extra rancher okay we're gonna bring in another rancher and this is gonna be our boy Brum he's not been about for the entirety of this season I didn't realize if I knew I would have done it sooner but yeah here we go Brum is in he is another rancher that's pretty cool next we'll be on the lookout for a operator because I've noticed that a few of the operation skills are not getting done. Okay, so the thermal aqua tuna is in place. It is going around and chilling down this water just a little bit. That's nice. That's cool. I've gone and changed the system up here a little bit so that this uh, this will send out a signal when it is down at a certain level. So you can see at the moment it is down. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find the automation key here. The storage system here will send out a signal depending on whether it's over its high threshold or not. The, the, the low threshold also has something to do with it but you know that that doesn't really matter what we need to know is whether over the high threshold or not uh the big thing is it's in the wrong direction if you can see sends a green signal when the red wire is less than the low threshold full until the high threshold is um 
is reached again. Uh, that's not what I want. I want it the other way around. So we pass it through a not gate and goes into an AND gate. Therefore, it only will turn, uh, only will listen to the thermo sensor here if we have more than 90% foliage in here. Uh, that then means that when it is cold enough, it can be taken out. Uh, I just, I didn't want to run out of water in here. I was super aware of the fact that it's also our cooling supply uh, and super didn't want to run out of the water. The next thing I know is that we are not actually producing enough power. Oh no, it's, uh, it, we weren't producing enough power just before I started talking to you, but now we are again. So that's fine. Don't worry about that. But I do want to go and make a few more of these. But as you can see, we are uh, sadly missing in the steel. So I'm afraid with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time where it turns out we're going to have to work on our steel production because I want to put at least two more uh, petroleum generators in there. And actually, I would like to speed up the, the rate of cooling for the petroleum. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that, but I will see you next time when we're going to figure it all out. Bye!